Hey Cyberspit, I'm Zach Caparelli. And I'm Marley Weirda, and you're watching Aftershock. Hello Cypress Bay. Hey Cypress Bay. I'm Melissa Goldstein. I'm John Matito. I'm Marley Weirda. And you're watching Aftershock. With over 4,500 students at Cypress Bay High School, there's plenty of stories to find, people to entertain, news to catch up on, And at the end of the day, we go to the field when lightning strikes. This is Aftershock! Recently, all forms of the media have been revolved around the re-election of our president. And here in Broward County, people had strong opinions about this year's heated election. After months, and months of campaigning, the 2012 election looked to be extremely close as Barack Obama took on Mitt Romney in a race decided by a few states. Every vote that you take actually counts. So people say that if you don't vote, it doesn't count, but it actually does. Every single vote for the candidate that you choose for is going to be more of a direction that you want to go in in your life. This is your only chance to, uh, to make a, a difference as an individual. Uh, to get your voice heard and to elect somebody that you think is right for the job. Politics, which is usually an adult conversation, had kids talking as well. I think that people have to think past their parties, Democratic or Republican, because maybe their ideas will be different too. Voting is not just for one portion of the population, but rather for all members of the electorate, young voters especially. Young vote is critical. It's critical to uh, what we need out here. We have all the older votes, but we need everybody to vote. They're going to be the ones that are going to be inheriting the country from, the pop that ha from what the policies that are put in place now. They're going to be receiving those policies and seeing the benefits or the, the disadvantages from them. Voters went to the polls with varying reasons as to why they filled out a ballot. Economy. Because without that, if we don't get going in some way, then Where's, you know, how is our country going to be, where's our power, where's our, how are we going to do anything else? Healthcare is important to everyone, you know, taxes are important to everyone. Depends on the person and their standpoint, if it's economy and they're a fiscal conservative or they're liberal with, the, you know, with their money, it's all about, you know, where we spend our money in government. In an election where every vote counts, voters young and old turned out to cast their ballot. Tyler Finger, CBTV. November 27th through November 3rd, the early voting registration was opened on the Broward Branch Western Library. That gave the opportunity to the voters to submit their ballots and their absentee ballots and their early voting so that they don't have to wait in long lines on November 6th. So I feel this is a very important election as to where we're going in the future. It's a wonderful opportunity to choose and uh, what we have and how we can get it. It was framed in the Constitution. It's uh, governed by the consent of the masses. And if you don't have the masses voting, then you have a uh, few people leading this country. And they don't always represent the interests of the majority. As a woman whose mother had to fight for the vote, I would say that it's a very important vote. And I could still remember my mother getting dressed up and making it a big deal to go and vote. And, you know, we fought so hard for it. Especially women, we deserve the right to vote. Hey, hey. Hey. Taste the hot dog. Buy a CBTV hot dog and drink today for two dollars. Mom, so like, the doorbell has been ringing like a lot lately, and it's like really sketching me out because I really think there's someone at the door, but there's not really someone at the door, and then like things happen, and I'm really scared. The doorbell always rings. No, it doesn't. Put on your shirt. I do what I want. No, put on your shirt or go to your room. Then I'll go to my room. Oh my god, it's happening again. Like, I think it's the neighbor from like, the, the, the kid from across the street. I think he's like ringing the doorbell like really frequently lately. Um, okay. 
Yeah, you wanna check it out for yourself? Okay. Yeah. Freaky, right? Not really. Like, that's not normal. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to do about it. Oh my god, that's him again. Stay alive. Yes, I'm okay. I'm kind of scared. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think he's in the house. I'm so scared. Oh my god, James. Oh my god. Hey, Cypress Bay students. Come and join the fun at Pride's annual talent show November 14th at 7 p.m. Well, we're selling tickets um, in front of the cafe, in front of the cafeteria, each lunch. Uh, $7 general admission, um, $10 general admission, but at the door, and then $15 VIP. It's a great way to see how the school just comes together with all the different talents and all the different cultures that are in our school. Tell your friends about a night they'll never forget. High school can be tough and overwhelming. I just need to make this go away. <laughs> It's over. Baby, the it's over. All I hear is the piercing screams of my parents. I need to ease the pain. Listen, I, I've been thinking, it, it's not working out. I, th I think we should break up. But, but why? What have I done to deserve this life? I can't take this anymore. <laughs> so Marley, I think I'm gonna join debate next year. I'm sure I'll be pretty good at it. You know, Shaylin Walker knows a lot about that. She may be able to teach you how to excel. She asked me again if I think Randall meant to shoot himself in the head. And I tell her again. I don't know, Mama. Think highly of yourself, for the world takes you at your own estimate. And for senior Shaylin Walker, debate was what helped her believe in herself. I do dramatic performance, oral interpretation, prose, poetry, and duo interpretation. And it's more of an acting type of debate. Luckily for Shaylin, her talent has let her win many awards and titles and even future opportunities. I'm interested in c competing in debate in college and I've already contacted many of the forensics directors for the colleges that I'm applying to and they've already offered me plenty of scholarships. Confidence hasn't always come easy to Shaylin due to certain struggles in middle school. Whenever I would express my own opinions, they said that th they didn't matter and I should just be quiet. In debate, it helped me get out of my shell and now I'm not afraid to stand up for myself. Ever since um, she joined debate, she's been a lot more open with herself and she's able to show her personality um, more often than not. Not only has debate been a big and successful part in Shaylin's life, it's a reminder that even negative things become positive over time. I just love proving people wrong because before I felt like I couldn't stand up for myself and everyone told me I couldn't, but now I prove them wrong. You know, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Well, I don't know any fish, but I know a Gilman. I only know one Daniel Gilman, and here he is with sports. <laughs> Brandon Knight with the Detroit Pistons, and you're watching CDTV. Casey Greenberg is a senior hockey player for Cypress Bay. Here he is to tell you about himself. Hi, my name is Casey Greenberg, center for Cypress Bay Ice Hockey. It's Monday, our win against uh, North Broward Prep was pretty big for us. It's our rivalry team. Good to get that first win. I love that. I've been playing since I was three. I played travel hockey, high school hockey since I was a freshman. Traveled all over the world, Canada, all over the United States. I love it. Our biggest rivalry is probably North Broward Prep. We just beat them 2-1 in the first game. We lost them the last two years in the state finals, both by one goal. 
in the last minute, and last year we lost them in overtime. The Cypress Bay Varsity football team hosted Everglades for senior night and their last home game of the season. Here's Jake Winterman with a highlight. Last weekend, your Cypress Bay Lightning took on Everglades High School in their second to last district game of the season and their last regular season home game. The Lightning started out strong as Matt Day scored three touchdowns in the first quarter. This gave Day seven total touchdowns in the first quarter of the Lightning's last two games. In the air, Geronte Lewis was efficient going 5 for 7 for 87 yards, one touchdown pass, and no interceptions. Other scores in this game included a 25-plus yard touchdown run from Josh Kaiser. Cypress Bay's defense held strong against Everglades' strong passing attack, holding them under 30 yards and causing one interception. The Lightning were able to contain Everglades under 100 total yards, the fewest against any team this season. Because the Lightning won this game 35-7 and Miramar won the next day, the Lightning have clinched a district championship. Next week, the Lightning take on district rival Western. After that win, the Cypress Bay football team wrapped up district play at their biggest rival, the Western Wildcats. Andrew Anderson was there to cover the big game. Last Friday, your Cypress Bay Lightning took on rival Western High School in their last district game of the season in an attempt to sweep the 12-8-A district. The Lightning struck first as Matt Days broke three tackles to score on an 11-yard run to put the Cypress Bay Lightning up 7-0. Not long after, Western tied the game with a 34-yard run by Ethan Lewis. After a lightning punt following a three and out, Western started driving into Cypress Bay territory until Lucas Gallup forced a fumble recovered by Nico Marley at the 50-yard line. The Lightning were able to capitalize on the turnover quickly after Durante Lewis three threw a 50-yard touchdown. In the second quarter, the Lightning continued to dominate after Durante Lewis threw his second touchdown pass of the day to Blake Warmington, followed by a blocked Western field goal by Dion Hallman. The ball was picked up and scored on a 70-yard run by Nico Marley. On Western's first drive of the second half, dual-threat quarterback Wade Freebeck fumbled the snap. This turnover led to a 10-yard touchdown run by fullback Josh Kaiser to put the Bay up 35-10. Things would not pick up for Western later in the game as Wade Freebeck threw his second interception of the day to Dion Hallman. This interception led to a 35-yard touchdown reception by running back Matt Days. Cypress Bay would have the last laugh as they defeated district rival Western 49-17, officially sweeping the district. To start off the regular season, the Lightning hockey team hosted North Broward Prep on Monday. Here's Craig Kovitz with the highlight. On Monday, our boys varsity hockey team took on rival North Broward in a rematch of last year's state championship game. Danny Worth got things going with a goal in the first period to put the Lightning up 1-0. Early in the second, Spencer Kaiser was called for a high sticky penalty, which gave North Broward a key power play. North Broward capitalized as Hunter Wang snuck the puck past goalie Randy Schmidt to even the game at one goal apiece. Not long after, Danny Worth scored his second goal of the night to put the Lightning up 2-1 with under 8 minutes to play. In the final seconds, North Broward had a breakaway and ended up putting the puck in the net. However, the refs conferred and ruled that the puck went in after the buzzer sounded, sealing the 2-1 victory for the Lightning. As football season's dwindling down, the Lightning JV team played Cooper City in their final game. Here's AJ Boveo with the highlight. The Cypress Bay Lightning JV faced the Cooper City Cowboys in the final showdown of the season. With the Cowboys dominating on their home field for the first and second quarter, the score quickly raised to 20 in the Cowboys' favor. Sophomore Anthony Corsell attempted to change the score, but to no avail. Freshman quarterback Jake Nodeberg passes to Dylan Poole for the last touchdown, making the score 35-7. Cooper City ran up the score, and after a couple defensive touchdowns, the Cowboys came away with a 35-7 victory. This was the last game of the Lightning season as they ended with a record of 2-4. Coming off of a national championship, the Cypress Bay boys soccer team was back in action as they hosted Douglas on Monday. Here is Sarah Frost with the highlight. The Lightning soccer team kicked off their first game of the season against Douglas on November 5th. With good defense and a lot of offense, Cypress Bay defeated Douglas with a score of 6-0. Their next game is Tuesday, November 13th at Flanagan. Emma Lincoln, a swimmer for Cypress Bay High School, has been swimming for as long as she can remember. I first started swimming when I was 8 because I wanted to quit ballet because I did ballet and soccer and my mom um, wouldn't let me quit unless I did two sports. For Emma, swimming is more of a passion than it is a hobby. Freshman, sophomore, and this year, junior year, I've done both districts, regionals, and states. 
and I've also done the dual meets against other teams. Emma tries her best, whether it's practice or competition. Um, at regionals, I did pretty good for myself. Um, I won the 200 free, and I got my best time with a 151. Um, and since I won, I automatically qualify for states. In lane three, Cypress Bay. Other than just competing, Emma encourages others to join the swim team. I would love to have more people on the swim team. I mean, it's a no-cut team, so if anyone wants to try out, they don't have to, they can just join the team. Um, it's fun, it looks good on college applications, and swimming's been a huge part of my life, so I recommend everyone try it. Emma takes much pride with the work that she does with the team. It feels really good just to have like an influence on people and just to see like people are getting more into activities after school and seeing the sport grow has been really nice. Emma aspires to take swimming to a more professional level. I'd love to swim in college and swimming I'm hoping that will get me to college like the scholarships and everything and obviously I would hope to eventually make the Olympics that's a very difficult road but I hope so in the future. Emma hopes to continue her passion as well as encouraging others who join the team. Kirsten Kozier, CV TV. So Marley, did you go to any wild Halloween parties? Actually, no, but Natalia went to a pretty wild one herself. Here she is with the story. On Friday, November 2nd, the Best Buddies Club held their annual Halloween dance in the cafeteria. <laughs> Uh, the Halloween dance is one of our bigger events of the year. I mean, the Buddies is one of their favorite dances just because they get to dress up and uh, that's something that they really like to enjoy because they get to get creative. With plenty of food, drinks, and activities, there was something for everyone. We have individual booths that we put together, um, for example, mask decorating or cookie decorating um, or mummy wrapping. Aside from all the booths, there was a DJ and music to keep the club members entertained all night. Right now. Not really good dancing, but I, I try my best. I think the dance went great. I think everybody had a great time. Um, especially, they love those group dances. No one is sitting during the group dances. Best Buddies allows its members to open up and reach out to those in need while also having a good time. Yeah, I definitely enjoy hanging out with them the same way I enjoy hanging out with all of my friends. You know, um, a lot of people think that they're different than most of your friends, but really when you hang out with them, you forget about any disability they may have. The club plans for more events throughout the year and encourages more and more students to join. Natalia Ioli, CBTV. With Thanksgiving approaching, many people are having trouble finding food for their families. At Weston Town Center, a bunch of people were able to come together as a community for a great cause. Today we're here at Town Center and the event is all about giving back. Um, this event is for Harvest Drive. We're in our 20th year in Broward County Schools and we're having our wonderful students from all the schools here come and collect, as you can see, for needy families in our community. So we are collecting today for 10 sites in Broward County Schools. Well, we call it our Community Fun Day and that's what all the fun is about. Before, we have some great kids out here working to see our vision of stamping out hunger in our Broward schools, but we want to make it fun because it is fun. And these kids have been with us for a long time trying to collect to help a child in their schools. Oh, I think it's great. The dance uh, studios that have been here have been absolutely awesome. Music's been good. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of activity and apparently a lot of food is being donated. It's a good place to spend your Sunday, and besides, we're raising money for a good cause. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashlyn Gorse for E! News Now. The pop diva changes up her look, stepping out with a shaggy new hairstyle. Thanks for catching E! News Now. Keep clicking E! Online all day, every day for the hottest entertainment buzz. With your daily dose of Celebrity Dish. And it's official, another gorgeous celebrity duo has tied the knot. The E! Star is always honest about her weight ups and downs. 
After adding a little to her hourglass frame, Kardashian has whipped her body into the skins, a sunset goddess. She posts pics of herself strolling confidently on the beach in skimpy pill pink tubies that shows off her curves and toned tummy. And she's setting the record straight. Hey Cypress Bay, I'm here at Cinemark and I just got out of watching three movies that I think you'll enjoy. This is your movie review. Hotel Transylvania is a movie about a girl named Mavis and her overprotective dad, Dracula. All in all, I thought it was a really good movie, the characters were all really thought out, and I definitely would recommend for you to go watch it, especially with your families. I give this movie 4 out of 5 Draculas. The movie Sinister is about a guy named Ellison, who is a true crime novelist and just moved into a house where a murder had recently taken place. As he looked more into the crime, horrible things started happening to him and his family. I thought this movie was pretty good, but I think they made the movie longer than it needed to be. But it was definitely scary. I gave this movie 3 out of 5 bloody knives. Paranormal Activity 4 was the continuation of the first three paranormal activities. The plot in this movie continued from the viewer knowing that Katie and Hunter went missing in the previous one. And coincidentally, a suburban family starts to witness strange events when a young woman and her child move in next door. I thought the movie was okay. I feel like they could have made the plot scarier, but other than that, I think it's a must-watch if you like the first three. I give this movie 3 out of 5 ghosts. I hope you'll enjoy these movies just as much as I did. That's it for this movie review. Steffi Aguirre, CB TV. That's all for this episode of Aftershock. From Marley Mirda, I'm Zach Caparello. Have a great weekend, everybody. Marley, I think <laughs> <laughs> approaching. <laughs>